So while I was here at the veteran car run that's happening, well, it actually is a St. James's spectacle, motoring spectacle that's happening on Paul Mall, you know, in anticipation of the veteran car run that is happening tomorrow, uh, they've got some stalls, some setups, some displays, and one of the things they have here is sustain. And this is about sustainable fuel. And uh, I know this chap here, uh, he's a friend of mine, we worked together at the British Motor Show, and I did do a video recently on sustainable fuel, and there were quite a lot of questions, and, and people, I think, wanted a little bit more information on that. So this is the guy to talk to. Let's go and do that. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Sustain fuel. I know this chap. Hello, how are you doing? Tell everybody who you are. Uh, so I'm David Richardson from, I uh, actually work for a company called Coriton, but we uh, own the brand called Sustain, uh, Sustain Fuels. Uh, Give me the Coriton logo. Uh, so there's got, the Coriton logo, logo there. Double logos, double logos. <laughs> just, just to yeah. confuse everyone, and there's our, there's our Sustain <laughs> logo. So I mean, I, I mean just, 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 to, just to put this one to bed at the moment, yeah. I mean, the, the reason why this exists is because we've, we've done this to, as a bit of a mechanism to help sort of talk about all the technology that exists in the sustainable liquid liquid fuels world. Um, I mean, the Coriton logo that, that you might well know is, is a bit of our, our skunk works operation yeah, yeah, yeah. That, we, that is where we, well, we, we originate from. Works, but I mean, you and I work together at the British Motor Show. Yeah. You're running all the vehicles at the British Motor Show on Coriton fuel, right? Yeah, yeah. So they so we had uh, the drift cars and we had the yeah. Catons running back yeah. then as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and since then, we've been doing a lot of work within all, all, di all different areas, whether it's the classic car sector yeah. um, and modern motorsport. I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's a big drive now to, to to look at how how we can complement the electrification yeah. side of, of you know sort of transport and motorsport um, because I, I think there is a reality that or there's well, maybe a bit of a pushback to say look maybe maybe electrification isn't quite right for me so is this something that I, 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 would, I, would, I would say pushback is an understatement right now. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of my viewers are, have a deep concern, shall we say. But on the other hand, I just did a video recently about sustainable fuel, and there was some pushback on that as well. There was some concern about the, re, the realistic nature of it. I mean, first of all, what does the, how does Coriton create its fuel? How does that even happen? Um, so a, a little bit of a, an overview with it without, without boring everyone to death. So if you look at sustainable fuels as an, un, un, uh, an umbrella term, uh, there's lots of different technologies that you can use to make, make them. And, and the, you can probably break them down to two elements. You've got on one side, you've got what you have traditionally heard of being e-fuels or synthetic fuels. And over here, you've got sort of advanced bios. Now, over this side, we've got your e-fuels. Effectively, you're making things out of thin air. You know, you're you're capturing the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. You're making hydrogen from splitting water, and you're using a huge amount of energy to, to do that. And therefore, the argument is, surely that energy should be better used to just plugging it into the wall, um, or and and also it's bloody expensive. Sorry, my, my language there. It's really expensive. Now, on one hand, you say, yeah, it's pretty inefficient. However let's assume you can do all that with renewable energy that you can other, not otherwise transport. There's no reason that shouldn't actually be a very, very good um, route to go down. And I think it will be um, the ultimate route that we go down, yeah. I should say. But, and more carbon extraction things are being made, aren't they, around the world? There's, there's, a, there's a lot being done. We, yeah. You've got facilities down in Chile, yeah. which is the one that's done by Porsche. Um, and they, they are also looking at uh, putting, getting, getting uh, two sites live in North America as well. Um, you've got a facility in Germany uh, that actually was a government-owned facility um, with the, uh, the, the Freiburg University, um, and they've been producing e-fuels e there. Tell, tell me this, there's a little bit of confusion in my mind, because some of them, they make these carbon extraction facilities yeah. to bury the carbon back in the ground, and I'm like, but well, why are you doing that? So, so they, they, they do, and I have to be honest, I don't necessarily agree with it. If you've yeah. gone to that effort to extract all that carbon, you might as well put it to, to good use. And, 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 and actually, this is where the, the, the biosite element of it comes from, because you go, well, I don't need to put all that energy into sequestering all the carbon. I can go down the by route where Mother Nature's done on all the heavy lifting for me and sequestered the carbon along with the hydrogen in some tangible or fungible for me yeah. that I can then easily you know, um, convert into into a liquid fuel. So, so you, you're right. I mean, bury, burying it back down in, into old wells, yeah. I think, is an, an absolute waste yeah. when you can then convert it back into a chemistry of some description. It doesn't necessarily need to be for fuels yeah. because the, the thing to remember is that Fuel is made up of hundreds of different chemistries that go into lots of different applications, yeah. whether it's textiles or tyres or lighting or... or, was, or, figure, or was it like 200-something uh, uses apart from just fueling cars for 
Well, petrochemical, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a huge amount. Yeah, there's yeah. a huge amount there. Yeah. 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 So what's the alternative? You're saying there's well, that's one side. What's the other so, side of it? So, so you got so like I said you, you've got your sort of e-fuel, sort of synthetic fuel side of things, which is using lots of energy. You're effectively converting the energy. The other side with the bio, bio, the, the bio based is where we're taking waste material. Okay, and um, and the reason why we're doing we concentrate on that route is because it's easy, it's cheap. Um, and it's easily scalable um, to do it. Up to a, to a point, I'm going to say it's scalable because there's only so much waste in the world that, that we generate. And the reason why we can do that is because what you're looking to do is you're... We've had thousands of years' experience of creating alcohol. We, everyone does it. Uh, we all like doing it as well. But it's very easy to convert the alcohol back into what is effectively a bio-crude that we can then use traditional refining techniques to then... Uh, adjust into making fuels or other chemistries um, in the way that we otherwise do now and it helps us to keep the cost down for doing that so that's why we concentrate on doing that we have good access to lots of waste it's a, it's a cheaper way of doing it uh, and it means that we can also scale it up as and when the demand um, increases so how realistic is it because some of the comments i had on the, in the video that i did recently was that it's not scalable it's too expensive it'll never be enough for everybody to use or it'll just be for i mean we're here at a classic car event now clearly i mean this is a small community it would be relatively easy to supply fuel to them and hopefully this is the way we can keep classics on the road in the future but is it realistic to consider this as an alternative to petrol as we know it today so i think if you're looking at trying to convert the entire fleet when we talk about the fleet we're talking about just every car light duty van that's on the road today are we ever going to get there i think with with the bio-based stuff i think we would absolutely struggle to do that because there's lots of competing um, demands for all of these so it's not just light duty we've got the aviation industry that are also saying we want to decarbonize and therefore we want to use all those bio-based feedstocks and they also want to use the e-fuel side of things is it realistically going to replace fossil fuel? I have to be brutally honest. I think fossil fuel is going to be around for a very, very long time yet. Um, and the, the simple reason for that is we dig out an extreme amount of crude oil. Um, and that gives us a lot of energy that is very, very hard to displace with um, other renewable means, whether it's solar, whether it's geothermals or wind energy. Um, it's very, very hard. So therefore, I think we will continue to see a mix of different technologies um, displacing fossil. It will always have a place, I think. Um, uh, where will we be in 100 years, if so, you were to ask me that? I actually don't know. Um, do I think it will be traditional battery technology and motors that will be propelling us around the globe? I don't think it will be. I think it will be something else. We will come up with something else by that point. But certainly for the time being, keeping classic cars on the road, keeping modern motorsport where it is today on the road, uh, well, on the track, should I say, that's where sustainable liquid fuels will continue to have a future. And I dare say that will be well into the next couple of decades. That's amazing. Well, I'll tell you, in 100 years, we'll all be having dilithium crystals from Star Trek. You know, that's <laughs> what I think anyway. But apart from that, in terms of, you know, you're doing events like this and you're providing fuel to, like, for example, the Redmond car runs and stuff like that. If people want to get involved or if people want to run their car on it, is it feasible, possible for people to do that? Uh, yeah, absolutely is. So we've got some, um, we're setting up more distribution um, all around the UK. Uh, we've got a, a well, so the first distribution point we had, which was up at Bista Heritage. So there's actually a, a pump up there that's running our Super 80. That was the first sustainable fuel pump in the UK. So you can go there. We've got um, a facility, we've got a place down in Battle in Kent that's going to be operational soon. That's at CKL Developments. Uh, we're also working with the Spline Tub in Oundle. They're about to take delivery of a, of a pump as well, but they will also be taking uh, the different grades of fuels and drums. Uh, and there'll be a few others. So I think watch this space. Um, have a look on the website. We try to keep that up to date. Lots of information on the website Tell around. What the website is? So the website is sustain-fuels.com. Um, I think it does say if you just Google sustainable fuels, hopefully we'll uh, be the first hit there. One more question then. In terms of the cost of the fuel itself, is the same fuel duty applied to that as it is to normal fuel? Uh, unfortunately, we are taxed at the same rate as fossil fuel. It is a bit of a bugbear of us, and it's something that we are trying to work with the government on just to get us parity. Yeah, I would say that this surely that's a, that's a thing to take up. It's like surely we are doing the climate a favour here, right? Uh, absolutely. And, and the, the reason why we're so frustrated with it is because some of the same feedstocks that go into our fuels if they go into energy generation, they 
are subsidised and there are tax breaks for using those to then produce your electricity that comes out your socket uh, and then that might well then go into your, your EV car for instance, yet yeah, we're penalised for doing the same thing. So yeah, there's a lot of work to be done around that and actually that will be one of the things that helps support the adoption of these because it helps bring the price down. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's so great to catch up with you again and thanks so much for talking us through this. Very welcome. Shout out time, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps. It really does.